start with uh, Mike Giardi, followed by Max Rood. Morning, Josh. Morning. I, I wanted to ask you, uh, Gunnar Olszewski has attracted quite a bit of attention from, from, from us up in the stands watching and looking like he's a, you know, he's made a, a, a big step forward. I'm just curious, you guys obviously know a heck of a lot more about it than we do. Uh, if you guys are seeing, if you are seeing the same sort of, of growth and, uh, as, a, as an NFL wide receiver. Yeah, Gunner's worked really hard. Um, I mean, he, <clears throat> you know, he he's uh, he's put in a lot of time and effort in the in the weight room. I know he's put a lot of time and effort into uh, understanding our system better than what he did last year. Um, and then, you know, being able to to throw with uh, guys, you know, periodically during the off season uh, when he was around here. Uh, you know, I think all of that has contributed to. You know, uh, he, he's, he's a lot further ahead than he was last year, certainly. Um, we're talking about a guy that really didn't play offense until last season, you know, so in college and, and, and so forth. So um, I think we, we've, we've tried to, um, you know, demonstrate patience with uh, him and a lot of the younger players, uh, giving them opportunities, putting them in different spots, continue to work on their fundamentals and techniques that can help them uh, be productive at, at that position, uh, which is not an easy position for a player to learn how to play at this level uh, without prior experience. So, um, you know, he, there's not many guys that work harder than he does. Uh, really, really takes coaching well uh, and certainly doing things, uh, doing things each day, um, you know, at different, at different positions and spots on our offense uh, than he was capable of doing last year. So certainly progress. And uh, like a lot of those guys at that position, you know, in our receiver room, uh, we're, we're going to continue to try to push them, uh, teach them, um, and, and continue to try to help them improve. <clears throat> Thank you, Jeff. Yep. And next question, Max Rulo, and I'll ask anyone else to raise a hand if they want to ask a question. Hey, Josh, how's it going? Great, how are you? Hey, it's going good. Hey, so I wanted to ask about uh, Cam Newton. So he's, you know, been in the league for a long time, and obviously you guys have all had a chance to watch him and, uh, you know, break down his film over the years. And I'm wondering that since he's been uh, with the team, if there's anything you've found that he does really well that maybe you didn't realize or that, you know, maybe came as a surprise to you. Yeah, I've said before, I mean, you don't have the type of success that Cam's had in his career uh, without doing a lot of things well. I mean, it's, it's really difficult to uh, play quarterback in this league. Uh, you know, it's probably the most difficult position in all of sports to, to, to play and excel at. Um, and he's done it at the highest level. And so um, I went into it with an open mind. I didn't, you know, without having uh, extensive firsthand knowledge of, of Cam, um, you know, you just go into it with an open mind and you learn about the player uh, you learn their strengths. You learn maybe what their weaknesses are or, or what you can try to help improve. Um, and so nothing's really surprised me. Um, you know, Cam understands football uh, very well. Um, he, he can handle a lot of different multiples, which you need to be able to do at, at that position. Uh, he reads the coverage well. Um, and he puts a lot of time and effort into it. Uh, look, this is a difficult a difficult position to play and then when you're making a change in terms of terminology and offensive system uh, it requires an inordinate amount of time uh, and effort and energy uh, to try to make sure that you know all the things that you know you want to know and know all the things that you need to know to be successful so um, you know I, I, I wouldn't say there's anything that has really surprised me it's been a really uh, enjoyable experience for myself coach fish our staff um, you know, just to, to, to learn about, you know, him and where he's come from um, and then integrate him in there with, with Brian and Jarrett uh, and, and, you know, just kind of uh, see how, it, how, how it's all, you know, unfolded each day and continue to, to coach them and correct them and learn about the things that they do well and, um, and try to minimize the mistakes that we make at practice and, and, and kind of continue to do the things that we do really well, really well. Thank you. Brian, mm -hmm. followed by Doug Kine. Uh, hi, Josh. I'm wondering hey. what you've seen from uh, Jermaine Illuminor after having an extended look at him uh, in camp this summer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is uh, 
you know, we got Jermaine at the end of training camp last year. Um, and, you know, so it's, 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 sometimes, it's difficult at times, you know, when you get players in the middle of the season, or even at the end of training camp, where they have no off season, no OTAs, no strength and conditioning program in your, the way that you do it, and then no training camp, you know. Uh, you're just kind of throwing them into the fire and you're trying to teach them on the run. And so this year's, you know, I would say for Corey, uh, you know, uh, and Jermaine, you know, both of them we picked up at the end of, of camp last year. Um, they know our system better. Uh, they're more comfortable with our terminology, um, you know. And, and we've we've asked those guys to move and and play a few different spots, and they responded pretty well. Uh, they're all competing every day. Uh, Jermaine's been out there uh, each day, working hard at his techniques, at his fundamentals. Uh, he's a big guy, you know. He's hard to run through, you know, in pass protection, and uh, you know you, you, you can move people uh, up front in the running game. Uh, with guys like Jermaine. So, um, no, just pleased with what he's been, been trying to do, the effort he's given. Um, he's got room to improve and grow uh, like we all do, uh, but uh, that's what he's out there working hard to do every day. Uh, next question, Doug Kine, followed by Mike Giardi. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Uh, uh, I know that a lot of us in the media make a big deal out of a player coming from a, a similar system, but in Lamar Miller's case, this coming from Houston and Bill O'Brien's offense, does that give him a leg up on the system and learning the playbook really at all, or do we make too big of a deal out of that? There's definitely carryover. Uh, there's definitely carryover. I mean, you know, there's not that many places in our league that use the same terminology as we do, um, but, um, you know, certainly Houston is one of them. So um, there's definitely terms. There's definitely... Um, you know, parts of our system that he's definitely familiar with. And then there's other parts that, you know, we may have changed or, um, you know, we've broadened through the course of time uh, that are a little new to him. So um, it certainly helps. I mean, if you have familiarity with terminology, uh, the things that we're going to be asking you to do, uh, that always helps, uh, what, regardless of what position you play. Uh, and there's definitely some carryover for Lamar. <clears throat> and, uh, we'll go back to uh, Mike Giardi. Josh, obviously with the lack of preseason games and the joint practices, uh, you know, maybe certain players can't demonstrate their full breadth of skill sets. And I'm wondering how that pertains to Cam, because obviously one of the things that makes Cam and has made Cam unique and special at that position is the size, speed, strength to shrug off linebackers, defensive ends, and so forth. So I guess the question being, how do you know that that's still in him? How do you know that he still has that 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 bag of talents and skills in his skill set? Well, I think I mean I don't think you ever know till you know. Um, but you certainly see enough in the drills, enough in the the things that we've tried to simulate uh, to you know assume you know make a pretty pretty good assumption that that it's you know that it's that it's there and that it's where you want it to be I would say we go through that same process you know with backs receivers tight ends um, linemen each training camp because there's very few opportunities when we're in practice where you finish a block with a guy on the ground uh, you break a tackle and continue to run and and you know and do all the things that are actually going to happen in a real game and you're right you know, not having the preseason games so that you can evaluate those snaps and those live action reps. Um, you know, it, it's definitely something where, you know, when you don't have them, you, you miss that, you know, that, that opportunity to add to your evaluation. But I think everybody's in the same boat, you know. Um, you know, you, you, you want to know if your guys on defense are, are going to be able to tackle the way that you want them to tackle. The runners are going to be able to protect the ball and stay on their feet and break tackles and, and keep the ball high and tight. I mean, it's it's the same for really a lot of positions. I would just say, you know, in this in this situation that we're all in, um, you're definitely going to have to, you know, uh, use common sense and, and use what you see and try to make the best evaluation that you can on each player's skill set and, and where it's at um, and probably use the first month of the season to confirm that. It looks like the last question, but Yanni Karakas. 
Go ahead, Jan. Hey, Josh. Uh, historically, how far in advance do you game plan for your week one opponent? You have the benefit of having, you know, the whole preseason. Um, do you feel like in years past you over game plan because you have all the time on like a normal regular season week? And how excited are you to sort of have an unpredictability uh, involved in that? No one around the league has seen anyone at this point going into week one. I would say it's a, it's a great question. Um, I probably learned over time uh, not to, um, you know, not to over plan too far in advance. Um, Cause I know that, you know, part of the, part of the preparation for the beginning of the season is your evaluation of your own team. And until you really know what you have and, and what you do well and who you're really working with at each position, um, it, you know, you can just you can do a lot of work, and and it might it might be for not based on the complexion of your team after training camp. So um, there's a balance there. Uh, you certainly have an opportunity to get ahead, which we've all seen the opponent we're going to play in week one. We've all you know done our our research and our work. We know who those who those players are, and we and there's also some players we've never seen in that uniform. Uh, that we understand are there, but you know, not necessarily sure how they're going to be deployed. Um, so the unpredictability of week one is always there uh, because nobody really shows much scheme in the preseason in terms of, you know, really giving an opponent, uh, you know, a, a great look at all the things that they're really going to try to do in situational football or, you know, necessarily personnel groupings, etc. So. Um, you always go into opening day with, with a little bit of the unknown and, you know, you, you then have to be ready to adapt and adjust quickly in that first, first game. I'd say the first, for me, I'd say the first few games are just like that because even week one doesn't necessarily tell you everything you want to know. Uh, so even though the situation is the same on the other side where you say, yeah, they've never seen us do, you know, A, B or C. We've never th- and we've never seen them do D, E, or F. So um, it's a lot of that, you know, uh, on opening day. And I would say it probably is going to extend into the first few weeks of the season this year just because you just have so, you know, you don't have any views of anybody. You don't know um, new players, where they're lining up. You know, are they on the left, the right? Are they playing off the ball, on the ball? You know, who's playing the down safety? Who's playing the nickel? Uh, who's their sub-rush group? What front are they in? You know, have they changed their coverage, you know, philosophy, you know, at all? Or is it the same as it was in the past? So there's a lot of things that are that are going to be, um, you know, unveiled uh, on opening day for all of us. Um, I think the best thing we can do as coaches is prepare our football team uh, to do things that we have confidence in and that we can play fast and that we know how to do well and then allow our players to go out there and do those things and react to, uh, the different things that we see, but at least we have the advantage of really knowing well the things that we're going to be asked to do. And I think that's where I always start for opening day. And then, you know, if you have to change gears and adjust, then you go ahead and do that. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Thanks, guys.